This may be the Grey Goose talking, but <laughs> I, I love it. This is awesome. Filter everything. This is great. I'm trying to find my son a tablet for Christmas, and he wants one that's not out till December. So I've been doing a lot of search. I search everywhere. You know the cool part? I get nothing but tablet information now from every vendor I wanted. I don't have to wait for Black Friday. I don't have to do it. And when I'm done with that, I'm going to go start searching for other stuff. So I regularly use it to my advantage to find things that I want. And if you stop searching for those terms and stop looking for that information and switch to something else, then you'll start getting more of that. I mean, if I'm searching Polish history, then I'll get a lot of stuff from Poland. But it doesn't mean that's all I get, and I really don't care that they're sending me that stuff, because I asked for it in the first place, right. as opposed to all oh, your filtering, everything I get. It's an opt-in. No, no, never mind. I get, I get a lot of ads now for Viagra and women, women over 50. You know, you know, I'm not searching for any women over 50, but you know, if I want them, they're there, and they're as rapid as I guess. You know, so they, they know all that, but that that's a, it's pushed to me. But I don't I don't think this is uh, stormtrooper uh, tactics where I'm not allowed to search on anything else or my door will be kicked down. I can do what I want. I don't have a problem. With it. I just I got up here because I wanted to take a couple of the ideas that um, that Mac and, and Jennifer uh, s spoke about. It's kind of the next next iteration, which is. You know, we think about the internet as free, or we think about these, these things, you know, these services that we use as free. But when, when people complain, and it always cracks me up when people complain about um, Gmail being down. Well, Gmail is a free service. You don't pay anything for that. <laughs> and yeah, a lot of people don't. Um, and, and, and Google spends billions of dollars a year making sure that its infrastructure can handle the kind of traffic that these free services provide. And so I think we have sort of a personal responsibility, too, to acknowledge the fact that, hey, there's competition among mm -hmm. these different providers, right? So if we don't like what Google's doing, we can go to ask.com, or we can go to That's Yahoo. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the the, the Jeeves guy is gone. It's powered by Google. It's powered by Google. That's true. Um, <laughs> but but, but not, not only is there competition, but, but also we have to recognize that this, the, the, the benefit and the services that we're getting from these companies um, we're not paying for any money, but we're paying for an information. Right. And Google's currency is the information that we provide it by using its services. And I think we've gotten, and I struggle with this a little bit because on one hand I see that Google and other companies have a responsibility to their customers and to our society to, to do, you know, do things that are, that are right and that are ethical. On the other hand, um, we have seem to have become very comfortable advocating responsibility for clicking that little I accept the terms box yeah. right, when we sign up for a service and, and not really understanding the full ramifications of what that means. And I think that's a really important um, that's a really important thing that we as consumers need to take responsibility for. Yeah, it's hidden in pages of legalese and maybe Google can make it clearer what exactly they're doing. But on the other hand, you know, it's there for all of us to understand. And there are events like this and there are articles written about this topic. And uh, somebody here probably knows a lot more about this than I do, but I also believe there's a way to opt out of um, the filtering that happens on your search results. I believe you can use Google as an anonymous user if you change a setting in your account. Mm. So somebody who knows more about that might want to comment. I, I know the checkbox exists, I'm just not sure to what degree it actually limits the filter. I get both sides by uh, following Barack Obama on Twitter. <coughs> and then clicking on Fox News in the uh, side push. And I get both sides of the information right. You mean Fox News is not fair balance? In a hurry. You know, <laughs> I tell you all about these guys. We're joking. But I, 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 I know you want Fox. I know you do. You got to be in the middle, Bob. I, I, I always loved it, the statement of, if you can't figure out how they're making money, it's you. Right. And it, the yeah, idea and that's that so true. It's, it's like, all right, you're, they are selling your information that you're providing them really for some other benefit or service. Well, it's um, like growth. Sorry, go ahead. Well, it's just like, so if you look at a Facebook, you look at a Twitter, you look at a, an Amazon, and well, even Twitter doesn't really have a filter, but Amazon is notorious for very, very rigorously testing everything you do on that site to make mm -hmm. sure that you are, that, that they are optimizing that for just the engagement with driving things. But it, it's funny because it's like, all right, well, I just, there seems to be a lapse in their, their system lately. It was like, all right, I bought a, I don't know, a new HDMI cable. 
the next day I get an email of like, hey, look at look at all these great deals on HDMI cables. I'm like, uh, you're a day late and a dollar short. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, you have my dollar. So why are you sending me this email? But I mean, they're they're, they're really really good at figuring out that stuff. The bad thing is that now I use Amazon as my primary research tool to find things about TVs, to find things about cables, to find things about music, and it's just like, well, now it's my research engine and it's my purchase engine. What else do they really need to know about me? Really now, I mean, if there was a really good article yesterday that um, about Bezos and Amazon that basically said that Bezos runs more of the internet than you really would really realize, and it's just like really interesting, kind of just going into not only do they run the infrastructure, they're not only be running the e-commerce channels, but now they're also going to be doing with the Fire tablet, basically the competitor to the iPad, another level of engagement with the customer, and it's just like, all right, that's a, just an incredible amount of information, but if you're opting into it. My name is Mark Holzbach. I just moved here in July from Austin, Texas, and I still go to Austin a lot. I work for a company uh, I co-founded in Austin. I own nothing but Dell. <laughs> 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 and my partner, Dan, is the director at the uh, Grand Rapids Arts Museum, Arts Museum mm -hmm. and we were here for the uh, TEDx conference last May, and one of the speakers was Stephen Rosenbaum, and yes. is, does anybody here know the book um, Curation Nation? Yeah. Uh, and so that, you know, is a vision, his vision, I guess, of addressing um, the bubble, uh, the, the, the page rank bubble mm -hmm. with Google, that he, you know, he thinks that people are going to get fed up with letting a, a, a bot uh, sort your information, and that the, his vision of the future is that you'll opt for uh, individual experts that will be voices of clarity in the universe that will have spe specific areas of knowledge that you will see seek out. And, uh, and uh, I, I don't know if I buy it, <laughs> but it's, it's nice that he's thought about it and, and written a book on it. Stay there, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> <laughs> in response to that, um, are you familiar with the site Curora? I can never pronounce it. But Quora? Quora. Quora. Thank you. Um, where uh, there's also Stack Exchange, and if you're nerdy, there's plenty of other sites where it's a question and answer format. So, you throw out a question there. Um, Quora has things like uh, what is the best LCD TV? could be subjective, could be objective. And then you get qualified answers because the users have their profiles on Quora of what you know, what other questions they've answered and that sort of thing. So almost even flipping that on its head and saying, you could ask you know, the ether and have the individuals come in and answer versus the other way around of using apps like Flipboard or Zite where they're curated content for you, presented for you. So, just an alternative if you're not familiar with that. I think it's important, that's, that's a really good example, I think it's important to make sure that we're categorizing the types of information and the way that they're curated when we talk about all these different sources of content, right? I mean, search results in Google are one thing, but Google also has AdWords, which is its ad network, right? And I, as an advertiser, uh, want the people who are searching on Google to have information stored in Google so that they see my ads. If I'm targeting um, firefighters, bad example, but if I'm targeting, targeting firefighters, I want Google to have a sense that the person who's searching is looking for things related to firefighting and that my ad is gonna come up and, and therefore I'm gonna have to spend less money um, because the people who are looking at my content are already <coughs> curated in a sense for me. We also have content that our friends and, our, and the people that we follow curate, right? I mean, our Twitter feeds are curated Facebook news feeds are curated content. They're just curated by the people that we choose to follow, and then further curated by Facebook's algorithm, you know, in terms of what it thinks is most relevant to what we might want to see. And then you have sort of pure content, if it still exists anywhere, which is, you know. All right, one of you have to leave. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> this is it's not a real problem. problem. Back, where's the library guy? You're there. I mean, the Dewey Decimal System was a system that, that kind of curated and put things together, mm -hmm. and you, you, it, was, it was nice that you would, um, you know, you'd be looking for one thing and you'd find something that was maybe to the side of it, but um, it was all very structured, right? It's the so same from library. What? Same from library to library. Oh, right. 